Hey there, my name is Jonathan and I'm a pastor for Met Kids, Mech's children's ministry, and welcome. Today you're gonna experience a class designed to teach you how to become a Christian, how to make the first step in your journey with God and what it means to give your life over to Jesus as both leader and savior. And I can't, I gotta be honest, I could not be more excited for this class. It's actually gonna be in two parts and kids, I'm sorry, but the first part is gonna be really boring for you because I wanna to talk to your parents. So if you want, you can stay in the room and listen, or you can go get a snack with your parents' permission, of course, or maybe you can play a game, but parents, this first part is for you. So let's get started. Uh, I'm a huge Panthers fan. They've been my team for about as long as I can remember. I've been watching their games, and I, I could even tell you every single player on offense, on defense, probably special teams too. I'm a little bit obsessed. Uh, and so how did that happen? How did I join Panther Nation as a kid, and how am I still a fan today? It was my parents. From an early age, they brought me to games. They bought me Panthers t-shirts. They watched the games with me. They made Sunday afternoons a fun and family experience. I was never allowed to cheer for the Falcons, much less the Saints or the Bucks. No way, not in our house. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of Jesus. He's been my God for as long as I can remember, and I love him more than anyone or anything. So how did I join Christianity as a kid and remain with Jesus today? My parents. Parents, you're the single greatest influence in your kid's life, uh, now more than ever. You may believe that social media or celebrities or friends are more influential than you, and that's a lie. Study after study has shown that the single greatest influence in a kid's life is their mom, their dad, or the person who's filling that role in their life. Shout out to all you grandparents out there. In a landmark study on how parents pass down their faith, a sociologist named Christian Smith found that parents play the leading role in shaping the character of their kids' religious and spiritual lives, even well after they leave their home and often for the rest of their lives. See, a lot of parents believe that they lose all of their influence or most of their influence over their children around the teenage years, maybe even a little bit earlier, and to be sure, more than a few teens act as though their parents are straight garbage and don't matter in their lives. But according to the sweeping research of Smith and his team, that's an illusion and it's not supported by the facts. The truth is that the influence of you, the parent, on your children while they still live at home, including your influence on their religious identity, is huge, lasting for years, decades, and usually their entire lifetime. And obviously by watching this, you want that. You care about shaping your kids spiritually, giving them the gift of faith, a faith that will guide them and serve them, and most importantly, ensure their eternity in heaven. Because if what Jesus said is true, then there is a heaven, which means there's also a hell, and your child is gonna go to one or the other, and we all want our children to go to heaven. But let's be honest. Our worst fear is to force faith down our child's throat, to, to turn them off to Jesus, to be overbearing. We don't, we don't want it to be our decision for them. We want it to be their decision. We want them to make their faith choice for themselves. We don't want them to resent us or our faith. And, and I get it. But I want to encourage you with some facts, supported by research that Smith and his team found when they studied how parents effectively pass faith down. And it boils down to four ideas. Be authentic, be intentional, be child-centered, and be consistent. Let me explain. First, be authentic. Uh, just like it would be weird to try and convince your kids to be a fan of a sports team that you could care less about, make sure that you are actively pursuing a relationship with Jesus yourself. The best prediction that Smith found of what anyone is going to look like religiously is to look at what their parents are, which means leading your kids to faith in God has to start with you. If you follow him, that is the first and best step to leading your kids to believe in and follow him too. And being an authentic follower of Jesus does not mean being perfect or hiding your sin or your mess or your junk. An authentic follower of Jesus makes mistakes, just like everyone else. They just authentically own up to being imperfect and apologize and realize that they need Jesus and try to follow Jesus with their life. But it isn't enough to just walk the walk authentically with Christ you also have to talk the talk. Going back to the sports analogy, imagine if uh, you never talked about the Panthers, never made it something that you discussed or did together, you just watched them and were a fan in private. There'd be no chance that your kids would get it. So next, you have to be intentional about having conversations about faith. It won't just happen, you have to make it happen. 
Now, if you're freaked out by the idea of talking about spirituality, relax. Research has proven that the quality of conversations that you have with your kids is way more important on influencing your children than the content and the words that you choose or share. In other words, how you interact when it comes to matters about faith has way more value and importance than the actual substance or the words that you're trying to pass on, which means the pressure's off. You don't have to have a seminary degree or have all of the answers or say the perfect thing in the perfect moment. How you say what you say, way more important than what you say. And the key idea is to just be authentic. Don't try to lie or to give answers to questions that you don't know. Just talk about what it means to you why it matters and why you care. And you do have to be intentional on more days than just Sunday. In fact, parents that talk with their children at home during the week about faith, uh, that was actually more strongly associated with passing their faith down to a child than either an increase in your own personal faith or more frequent church attendance, even though both of those things were found to be really important. So be sure that you're intentionally talking about it more days than just Sunday. Well, the next step is to make sure that your discussions, when you're intentional about them, are child-centered rather than parent-centered. In other words, have conversations where your child asks the questions and where they're allowed to talk while you stay more on the listening end. When we talk too much as parents and we make demands without explanations or force unwanted conversations or restrict discussions to only topics that we understand and that we control, faith transmission is likely to not only be ineffective, but also counterproductive. Now, this may seem scary, releasing control of the conversation to your children, but remember, it's less about the content and more about the conversations and how the conversations make your kids feel, which means Listening is kind of everything. Let them ask questions. Let them struggle and wrestle. And, and don't feel like you have to have an answer. Instead, just affirm them. Let them speak while you listen and don't, under any circumstances, shut them down or shame them into for thinking something or asking a question. Honestly, it'll be so impactful for them just to know that you hear and understand their doubts and struggles and yet still believe in Jesus yourself. I, I remember my dad told us the story that he had this moment or he went to his mom at a young age and uh, he asked her about faith saying, mom, if we were born in India, wouldn't we be Hindu? Or if we were born in Saudi Arabia, wouldn't we be Muslim? And so how do we know that we believe the right thing? Like what if we were born in the wrong part of the world? And thinking back, my dad realized that he, he just wanted to know if his parents had even thought about this before. Well, his mom replied, uh, you know, your father and I have looked at all the faiths in the world and we've come to the conclusion that Christianity is what we believe and it's the right one and that is true. But you've got to make that decision for yourself. So if you want, we can help you explore other religions to help you decide which one you find to be true. And the relief that my dad felt when he heard that was like, oh, they've thought about this. And that was everything. That's all he wanted. He didn't actually want to believe in a different religion or even fully explore other religions. He just wanted to make sure that his parents had thought about this idea before. What you say does not matter as much as how you say it. And when you do keep it child-centered, listening more than talking, focusing on their questions more than trying to find the perfect answer to it, it'll allow your child to see faith as something that could be for them. Well, finally, be consistent. Imagine if you only watched one Panthers game a year and rarely talked about them. Uh, maybe you only had one or two conversations a year and then you were kind of done. Your kids likely wouldn't become fans. Now, if you want them to join Panthers Nation, you have to be consistent, miss games rarely, talk about it, watch year to year together. And it's the same with faith. Research has proven that faith is optimally passed on when parents are intentional and consistent, actively engaged, neither hands-off nor overbearing, uh, but parental consistency in word, in deed, in rules, and in meaningful intentions is so important to the success of passing your faith down to your children. And so the headline is, the more consistent you are about talking about faith in Jesus and the Bible and God, the better chance you have of passing down your faith in Jesus. Okay, so that's a little bit about your role. I can sum it up like this. Authentically follow Jesus 
and be intentional and consistent in having child-centered conversations with your kids about faith. That's your job. And honestly, you can do that. You don't have to do it alone though. We're here to help you. Uh, start by making Sunday morning a priority. Whether you come in person or join online, make Met Kids or any church part of your life. It'll give you a consistent time every single week to talk about faith with your kids. And then use the resources that we offer. Our job is to partner with you to lead your children to know, love, and serve Jesus. And that's why we've got resources like the Kids Guides or the Parent Guides or the Met Kids Recap Podcast or the Bible Story Podcast or Mental Health and Anxiety Guides. We even have resources answering the top questions that kids ask about faith, God, and Jesus. And they are all available on the Mech app. So you can get them whenever and wherever you need. Uh, they'll give you easy ways to have intentional, child-centered faith conversations with your kids on a consistent basis. And if at any point you have any questions, ask us. Please, you can contact us through the Mech app or through the website. We're always here for you. You are not alone in this journey. But now comes the big moment. Taking the step where your child has a chance to pray to Jesus, to follow him, and begin their journey of faith that will shape their values, their self-esteem, and set them up for a life with Christ that can weather any storm. Are you scared? Nervous, excited, <laughs> me too. But take a moment and just relax. Your child might not be ready and that's okay. This is just a step. The more that you intentionally have them talk and think about their faith on a consistent basis, the closer that they will come to making this decision for themselves. And if they do make the decision to follow Christ, I mean, that's awesome, <laughs> like congratulations. But remember your job's not done. Your kid may come to you one day around the eighth grade and say, hey guys, I actually think that Christianity is kind of stupid. Uh, side note, that's what I did to my parents. I'm sorry if your kids do that to you too. Um, so the intentional, consistent, child-centered conversations have to continue past today. This isn't like a one and done thing, you know, check that box. Uh, okay, enough for me. Next up, you've got a video that you can watch with your child. And this video is actually designed to talk about what it means to be a Christian with your kids. Watch it with them and then allow them to talk. Ask them questions. And if you don't know what questions to ask, uh, we actually have a guide for you too that you can just pull up on your app, on the Mech app, on your phone, and you can look at it uh, right after you watch the video. And if you have more than one kid, I would suggest watching this with them one-on-one. -on -one. Let them have a chance to wrestle with this alone with you. And remember that your child might not be ready. That does not mean that you failed. Today is just a step, one of many, as you work to become intentional and consistent about having child-centered conversations about faith in your home. Well, we're praying for you, and now it's time. Make sure your kids are with you, and go ahead and start watching the next video.